So new polling reveals that 50% of rural voters associate providing stimulus checks directly to families and workers with the Democratic Party, and 42% associate rural broadband with Democrats. So the poll was conducted by YouGov and Rural Objectives PAC. Here to weigh in on findings, executive directors of Rural Objectives PAC, former congressional candidate J.D. Shelton. J.D., it's good to see you. Welcome back to the show. Good morning. It's really good to see both of you, too. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about what you found here, man. So I, I think what I wanted to do is show what I was seeing on the ground in the last couple of years and how there's really a misconnect from kind of more of the establishment out in D.C. to what's actually happening with voters. And I thought nowhere is that more clear than the stimulus checks that only 50 percent of them know uh, the fourteen hundred dollar one came from Biden and thirty nine percent thought they're from Donald Trump. And so. You, you know, we talk about the Democratic message uh, or we talk about we should improve the Democratic message. The message is not getting through to these voters. And, and that's the bigger problem than the actual message. And I want people to understand that maybe aren't familiar with you. You ran in a very rural, the most rural district in Iowa, um, wildly outperformed what Democrats typically do. in that district came it within a hair's breadth of actually making it into Congress. So, and part of your strategy there was to actually talk to voters, really remarkable and, and groundbreaking strategy in every county in your entire district. You can tell me how many counties there were, because I'm sure you know that off the top of your head, but there were a lot of them. Um, what did you find in this polling, though, in terms of how voters think about the Democratic Party overall, outside of like the specific policies? And, and that, I think, to me, was the really interesting point, because when you have you go from very favorable, favorable, neutral, um, unfavorable to very unfavorable. So both the Democratic Party and the, the Republican Party are about 17 percent. So they're, they're even on the very favorable. And so what we've seen in this poll is that the rural voters in these battleground states, they don't like Republicans, but they hate Democrats. And mm -hmm. the unfavorable is, is for Democrats are about 50 percent. And, wow. and that's the biggest difference. And so, I mean, you put uh, if you have a policy that people like and this is some of the things we tested, uh, you put a D by its name, it drops 10 percent just like that. Wow. You have a candidate uh, who we did some generic candidate testing, uh, just candidate A believes this, this, and this versus uh, someone, and and we uh, did several of these. And basically what we saw was if you have a D by your name, you're 35 points behind in these in this area. And so there's 55% of these voters, I, as far as the Democratic Party is concerned, is is, is we're, we won't even touch those. Those folks are... are uh, indoctrinated in, in this world and, and will never even uh, see it, uh, will accept a, a democratic message. And then there's the voters that vote for Democrats, and that's about 30, 35 percent. And so what the Democratic Party really needs to be is uh, really targeting this 15, 10 to 15 percent. And if we do that in these battleground states, we're going to have success uh, in the Senate and we're going to have success in 2024 because that's, that's this is where the battle's at for the Senate for sure. And, and this is what fascinates me around this, J.D., is that people will see your poll and they're like, yeah, you're right. But then they come to D.C. and they don't seem to understand just how much ha how hated they are. I've said here for a long time, the most potent force in American politics is hatred of the liberal intelligentsia. And yet they're, if anything, more in power of the Democratic Party than at any time before. So what do you think can actually realistically change around that fact? Well, this is what I'm looking to do uh, with Matt Hildreth and RuralVote.org is really we're going to uh, start a, a process into, uh, one, improving the Democratic brand, uh, finding uh, ambassadors uh, to speak of the message. And then I think a huge part of this is the mis and disinformation. And that's the, the thing that I don't think uh, the, the, the strategists or the, the consultants uh, really have an understanding of what's happening. My district is the second most agriculture producing district and and we have 39 counties um but but the thing that was i don't think anybody has really touched upon is we're the number one district in america that uh, voters are on facebook when, when it comes to democratic and republican voters and just the amount of mis and disinformation more people get their news from facebook in my district than that uh, anywhere else i mean mm. more than watching fox news more than anything else and so that's where we got to be and and we got to call out when we see something that that's not right and and we got to have uh messengers there but like where i live 
my state rep, my state senator, my uh, governor, my member of Congress, and both senators are all Republicans. And they're going on local TV. They're going on local radio. We got to have uh, uh, voices out there countering some of the stuff that they're saying because they're, that's not happening right now. Mm-hmm. J.D., two questions. for you. Have you found much receptivity in the Democratic Party for the research that you're doing here? Because oftentimes it seems like, you know, I mean, Barack Obama won Iowa. That wasn't that long ago. But oftentimes right. what it seems like is when a state slips out of Democrats' grip, they're like, eh, that one's gone. We can't ever win it back. So we'll just go to Georgia. Or we'll go to Arizona. We'll find another state that's going to be an easier fit for us. Rather than saying, hey, what, well, these are the same people living here. Like, what happened? What can we do to win them back? And number two, like, how would you describe what is animating that sense of just hatred for the Democratic Party, where it's like, I don't care who you are or what you say or what you've done. If you got a D by your name, I am 100 percent not voting for you. Well, the first thing I'll say is we should not do an either or we should do a yes. And when we talk about should we play in Georgia and should we be in Arizona? Absolutely. But we should also be in in Iowa. We should be in Ohio uh, and and fight for those things. Uh, We also should have a vision, a a better long term vision. You look at who the next wave of of rural Midwest Democrats, they're probably going to be people of color. They're probably going to be Latinos uh, and, and, uh, and people from the Latino community. Uh, that's uh, when I drive, uh, I've been driving a lot between Sioux City and Minneapolis and that stretch, there's a lot of meat processing plants and you see more and more uh, signs in Spanish. And so uh, once that next generation comes around, that's that's what we're seeing on the ground here. And so who's in that uh, world trying to register voters and, and do those sort of types of things, uh, the Democratic Party should be there. Um, uh, and... I apologize. What was your second question? I said, what's, what's animating that hatred? That hatred of people oh, who are oh, like, right, right, right. I will not vote for a Democrat. I hate the Democratic Party, et cetera, et cetera. I think it's an echo chamber that just uh, fills itself. I mean, you see when Obama won in 2008 in Iowa, and I take a county like Carroll County um, that uh, voted for Obama, but then it voted for Trump at 71%. And what have you seen in that 12 years? You see the rise of mis and disinformation on social media. I mean, far more people are on Facebook now than they were in 2008 in that in a rural county like that. And so that's where I see the, the biggest problem. And, and then it just feeds itself. And when you're in this world and, and you're, you're kind of uh, isolated, but you see the same stuff on Facebook and you see your neighbor posting and sharing and all this stuff, it, it kind of feeds into itself. And, and that's what we're seeing right now. Yeah, really interesting stuff and, and uh, insightful numbers there, JD. Thank you. Very Appreciate much it. so. Yeah. Great to see you, JD. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Mm-hmm. Of course. Well, I'm more rising for you after this. <laughs>